Hello, welcome to The Armin Show, where we talk about everything science, human behavior, creativity, and more. Thanks for joining, and make sure to subscribe. We are here at episode number 412. This one is going to be about eight things learned from having done over 400 episodes of The Armin Show. I'm your host, Armin Shervanian, as always. We'll be getting into a variety of items that I wrote out that are informative, things I've learned from speaking with people, having guests on, panels, my great co-host, and more. I will get started here. The first one I want to go right into, momentum, okay? You can build momentum that can then propel you. Why did I write this one out as the first one? When you have movement going in a direction, it propels you. It gives you magnitude and direction it gives you a wind behind your sails. When you have momentum, stoppage is not a thing because it gives you a little bit of a boost regardless. It's sort of like a lawnmower that has the button on it so that the wheels turn in the front. So it helps you pushing it along. And because of that, you're more likely to get over all the hard parts than if you didn't have that there's momentum already there on your side. In the case of content creation and something like that, your momentum, you build it, and then it's on your side, rolling like a wheel with you. So if, let's say, you slow down, the wheel propels you forward a little bit like a bicycle gear. It's sort of like bicycle gears. So how do you build this momentum? Effort, energy, doing the thing you do a lot in your direction, whatever people know of you, doing that, the thing that speaks to you, doing that, more of it. So in the case of the show, certain times when there's a lot of progression, a lot of discussions and interviews, that's momentum. Then it is like a backlog that pushes you forward to make more of that, to do more, to reach more people, because you can feel it behind you like a wave. And that wave is really nice to have. Can anyone build that up? Yes, anyone can build that up. Is it easy? Not always, but once it's going, things are definitely easier. So is it worth it? I would say so. You build it, and then it propels you. The second one I want to go over. You're not going to mesh with everyone, but you can share and learn with everyone. So I've had a variety of guests. Did I mesh with every single guest? where we were right on the same page, or we fully agreed on everything, or we didn't have any differences of opinion? No. There's a variety of people that I've spoken with, and because of that, we're gonna have some individuals where, nope, not exactly. It's closer because the people I would reach out to or have on the show are somewhere in the line of what I naturally talk about or am interested in or look into. But it's not always the case. And so, when that happens, we have a difference. Sometimes that's just as good, if not better, because you can share, you can learn from them. You can see something you wouldn't normally see from the people you most mesh with. You don't want to get into an echo chamber. It really is a chamber. We don't go to chambers for a vacation. It's an enclosed space. That's not where you're going to expand outward. It's not where you're going to expand outward. It's sort of like a comment that guest Rebecca Faith Lawson said and co-host on episode 160 about how a small town gives you a lot, the feeling from a small town, and what you can do there, you can do a lot. But possibly it does not expand your mind the way it should and that is essential for life same thing with if you don't connect with all the people who are not exactly the same as you are similar you're not expanding as you should it'll be somewhat of a holdback and you'll feel that later on it will be a limiting factor of sorts but we don't want that we don't want that the third one here you get smoother at something you do a lot this is very true when you, let's say with the show, have a consistency on your content, 
Now you have templates already for messages you would send to people. You have the files in the right places on your computer. Everything's in order. You know where you're saving things, what you're sending, how you're going to record the audio. You might already have the microphone in the right place. You may have the camera settings the way you want. When you do things regularly, all these things get smoothed out. Now, if you don't do things regularly and you want to start back up, now there's a lot of friction. Maybe you don't have this. Oh, there's a part missing. Oh, you don't know what to send in the message. You have to write out a completely new message, new template to contact people. There's so many pieces that will slow you down in the process. That's not inspiring. And then it doesn't get you to the end result, shipping out something that is you, which could be an episode in this case, or content or clips or something like that. When you do it a lot, you become smoother. Everything's in the right place. Your mind is already there. You're not forgetting things. It's not throwing you off, is the way I put it. Good. Before the next one, I will take a deep breath. Good. Peacefulness. Now, the fourth one. Speaking with people and having a record of it is a special thing. I highly identify with this feature. So, having a record of your discussions with other people can be very valuable because now you have in your background that time recorded, what you learned, a moment that you cannot recreate. Some things talked about or spoken of, you wouldn't do it the same today in 2023, for example. But at that time, that was important or that was covered. Some things are more timeless, but in general, things have a moment. And so to capture that moment and have that discussion, some of the ones I look back on that I have, you can't get that or the value of it to me is very high or it tells me a lot or it tells me a story about that person that is encapsulated through time. So even if they are a different nation or if they have adjusted their existence in some way, still that recording remains, the thoughts remain, and it gives a great sense of that person because we don't change too much as people. So it's a bit of a capsule of the individual, but it reflects a lot of who they still are today. And that's neat to have. Many can go a whole life without having things recorded of them or collected in some way. And others would have nothing to look back on or to examine or to question them on because it's not there, their thoughts, their feelings, their, what that moment meant to them. So it's pretty substantial in that aspect. Depth, this one right here, this is number five of the eight, number five of the eight. Depth develops through the time span of a discussion. So when you record, you can have multiple, obviously, discussions with people. But when you do record, let's say it's an hour-long talk, 10 minutes in, 20 minutes in, 30 minutes in, you're getting more of a connection with the person. It starts to get into a better flow. That time gives you, okay, they might like this. They're not fond of this. This is disagreeable, whatever it might be. And so the extended discussion like Juliana Schroeder from UC Berkeley once said, it gets to a point and then it goes, maybe 30 minutes in, 20 minutes in. Once you pass that point, now it's no longer that difficulty of trying to connect with the person. Now you are wanting to connect with the person. Time is running out at that point. So it's a different headspace to be in and it develops through the time span of a discussion and you don't see that unless you do a lot of discussions and you see the patterns there. So one thing that is important about doing a lot of one thing is the pattern recognition associated with it. You do a lot of that and you figure out how conversations go, what you bring to them, what's difficult for you in them, and what other people take away from what you say. Important one there also. Or you notice things too, like I just did that click sound 
I'm not fond of that in my recordings. But I noticed that because I've edited my material and you'll see things that, oh, okay, I don't like that part. Ideally, I would have less of that, whatever it might be. If I edited it out, you're not even hearing the click sound I'm mentioning right now from earlier because I edited it out, which happens sometimes. The next one here, I believe this is number six. This is number six. People want to also know you as you come to know them. So I've spoken with a lot of people. Obviously, I'm interviewing a lot of individuals, the, the discussions, and others not only want to be bringing up their material, their studies, their research, their books, but they want to be showcasing their ability as well to listen to you and what you are interested in and what you express because they don't want to just be one-sided in the matter. They want to also see your views, your opinions, how that links with what they're thinking. Can they grow as a person? They would like to grow as well. It doesn't always have to be one direction if it's, let's say, an interview type of show. So in that case, you start to see, oh, certain people really want to know you. They might turn it back around. They might ask you questions. That's neat. Didn't have to happen that way. Some people more interested, some people not as interested in that. And if you see that, join with them. Let them know more about you. When you express a lot, then they can have the license to express more as well. So it can go up like that. I think that's quite interesting. The seventh one here on the list, consistency keeps all the steps of a process fresh in your mind. I mentioned this a bit earlier in the one where I talked about how things get smoother. But this is nice because when you're consistent in something, you have all the parts mapped out in your mind before you start. Okay, I'll do this, then I'll edit this part, the audio, okay, fix the audio thing, put it with the video, put it out there, add the picture, edit the picture for the episode, whatever it may be, you can see it all. But if you haven't done the thing in a while, putting up an episode, you might forget step three and four. So you do one and two and you're like, oh, I have to do this one. Oh, this part. Oh, I forgot to upload this. Oh, I have to update this uh, program. Suddenly there's friction and you're not thinking of all the parts. So if there's an issue that comes up, you are not as prepared beforehand because you weren't thinking of all the parts beforehand. So some technical issue comes up that you could have prevented if you had thought through, oh, okay, what issues have I had before? What steps have I been stuck on? Should we use a different program? What's a backup option? They would all be in your mind. Versus if you're not consistent, not everything is in your mind. So if something comes up, it's like you're closer to when you started from scratch in some ways. Consistency really helps. It gives you a propellant. And the last one, the eighth one from this set that I want to include, you can reach more people than you can imagine with the right mindset. So there are people out there, some people you really want to connect with, who speak your language, who have thoughts you want to see, feel, hear, have back and forth with them. If you have the mindset that that's doable and you're willing to reach out in some form, you can reach people you thought were out of your range, far off, doing something busy, distant, of a different caliber, whatever it might be, because you try and you put forward your qualities as well in the space. When you put, put those two together, now you have a real opportunity that they can afford you and then they can also meet you as well. They may, they may wanna meet you. So with that mindset, it's applicable. If you don't have that mindset, they will always be a distant individual, out of reach hard to get to, something that was not meant to be ever connected with, which most of the planet is to us as people on default mode. But really, there is opportunity there and welcoming opportunity with the right effort and the right mindset. Those are eight concepts I wanted to bring up from 400 episodes of The Armin Show. I may do another episode talking about other concepts, but these are definitely eight 
and you learn a lot when you do things, you keep going in some direction. Magnitude and direction is a big deal. You bring your oomph in a direction and other people can see that, they can feel that and great things can come from that. Whatever it might be. Could be drawing stick figures. Could be pharmaceutical research. Many categories are out there. But this is in the content creation category. I will leave it there. I hope you enjoyed this set of items. And we will catch you on the next one. Here at the show. The Armin Show is a culmination of so many of my discussions with thoughtful individuals, knowledgeable individuals, creative individuals, people who have something to say in a category that they have put effort into maybe for years, maybe for decades. A lot of experience comes through. I like finding the links between people and topics of discussion in the categories that you have come to recognize. We're glad to continue the show, to branch out, to expand, to have more links between individuals, to have bigger groupings of individuals together in different formats so that the show becomes more of a show. And as we continue to do this, we're always glad for your support along the way. The Army Show is something that has developed from all my past efforts, blogging, making videos, audios, and has reached to this point where there are now hundreds of episodes with people or just with myself, bringing knowledge, sometimes entertainment information, something that can help us progress forward in the categories that I tend to cover. Hope you enjoy it and onward we go. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please comment any takeaways you had and we'll see you on the Armin Show next time.